Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, what would you think of if I asked you how successful are you? You're probably now thinking of your profession, your levels of income, maybe where you live. And I would imagine not many of you are thinking about how happy you are. My idea for a talk is a very simple one, and it might not be revelatory, but I hope given the context of my career and my very unusual family circumstances, it might be helpful, particularly for children at school who are not perhaps the high flyers and might not be relishing their career prospects. My niece is studying to be a doctor, and she was applying to my old school. And at the open evening, the headmaster made great stock of the calibre of student that this school required. The upshot being that this was a very difficult school to get into. This confused my niece, and she turned to her friend sitting next to her, and she said, I don't think this school can be that difficult to get into, because I'm pretty sure that my Uncle Dominic came to this school. <laughs> and no hard feelings, because when I was at school, I too thought that I was stupid. And this is a feeling that would stay with me through my 20s, my 30s, and even into my early 40s. And it would ill-equip me for a career as a comedian and a writer. But now in my middle age, I realize that that isn't the case. So how stupid have I been? What an error on my part. Albeit, it does have a significant upside, which I'll come to very shortly. School was a struggle for me. At least secondary school was. Primary school, in contrast, had been fantastic. When I was a little boy, running, jumping, reading, writing was easy to me. Dare I say it these days, but as a little boy, I was the man. But in fact, it was the late arrival of my actual manhood that would blight my secondary school and in part adversely affect my life and my career. But now I realize that as a very, as a summer baby and a very late developer, at school, I was not stupid at all. I was just very, very young. And that's a huge disadvantage during our formative years, especially when we're expected to lay down indelible markers on which we will be judged for the rest of our lives. Far better to be the oldest child in the year, which is why some parents make plans and they try and conceive and have children in September. As well as being remarkably unromantic, I would consider that any advantage that these children have are likely to be outdone by having parents who are unhinged. But now I realize, at school, had I known that being a summer baby and a very late developer, it would have been useful to know that that was a disadvantage. Nobody ever explained to me that at school, often, it is the hairiest children that play for the school team and ace the exams. And what's more valuable than a grade A, and even more durable, is the sense of confidence that these achievements can imbue, playing for the team, getting good exam scores. And confidence cannot be overestimated about how we perform in life. I work in show business, and I find that nepotism aside, the most successful people in show business are often not the most talented, they are the most confident. And conversely, a child who's underdeveloped and performing badly is likely to have their confidence dented. And they too can take this forward into life with adverse results. Human beings, we like to measure things. We feel comfortable with things that we can measure. In mathematics, two and two is four. That is irrefutable. In English, subtle is spelled S-U-B-T-L-E. That's correct. But we're less good with the soft skills, 
self-esteem and confidence. Difficult to quantify, intangible to teach, and I think too easily ignored. Not that academic rigor isn't important. Of course, it is. An engineer with a very highly developed sense of confidence but a loose grasp of mathematics should never be allowed to build a bridge. But my point is, is I think we spend far too much time and emphasis on classical IQ and not enough time on the soft skills like emotional intelligence, which is very dangerously undervalued. Because my career has been a, a great fun, I'm still enjoying it, it's ongoing. But it's definitely been dented by my lack of confidence. And I now put this down to my formative pre-hairy school days when I decided that everyone was better than me. And all parents would do well to be mindful of this. So I mentioned earlier an upside. What are the upside? Well, in my life, my most successful areas of my life have not come from being a comedian or an author. They've come from being a parent. Don't worry, I'm not about to explain how wonderful my four children are. They aren't. <laughs> and even if they were, I wouldn't give that speech. But my eldest son is Tom Holland. And his success is very apparent as the actor who is best known for playing Spider-Man. Which means, of course, that despite my best efforts in my career, I'm now best known for being someone's dad. When we think of children in show business, we think of pushy parents elbowing people out of the way for their children, banging away, banging to have a child at a certain time of the year. And years later, banging on the headmaster's desk, demanding to know why their child is not in the team or the captain. We were never those parents. One of my favorite facts about Tom is that as a little boy growing up, he auditioned for every single school play without securing a single speaking part in any of them. And we never thought to make an appointment to see the head of drama. He was disappointed and so were we. I would sit him down and say, right, well you went for Hamlet and you've been cast as a tree. Be the best tree you can be. But for a child who was overlooked at school, he is a summer baby. He was a late developer. What's interesting about my son Tom is, is not his talent, but his sense of confidence, which I think is worth dwelling on if you're going to help people give a talk. What, if anything, did his parents do for him to have this level of confidence? Well, I don't know all the answers, but some things, some things occur to me. Like all my boys, just like me, they're very, very late developers at school. So during their formative years, when they were being outdeveloped by their classmates, because of what had happened to me and my later understanding of it, my epiphany, if you like, I was well placed to reassure them and explain that when they were dropping from the school team, the reasons why. And I was very keen and I made sure that their confidence never diminished while they were waiting for body parts to drop and hairs to sprout. And now that those things have happened, I think all of my boys are in a far better place than I was when I was at their stage of life. Parents spend vast resources on their children in the hope that they will emerge from the crowd and be chosen, selected, promoted. But it's very, very difficult to be the best. To be the best at anything is difficult. It's unlikely to be the best mathematician, the best pianist, the best violinist. And even if these things can be achieved, often they are at a personal cost that is sometimes too high. But I think there are skills that children can very easily acquire. 
and they have a big bearing on a child's development. Something I told my boys growing up is very simple, and it is this. It's very difficult to be the best at maths in class or, or school, but it's very easy to be polite, even the most polite. Being well-mannered really hinges on five simple words. Hello, goodbye, please, and thank you. And if you use those words, look people in the eye, and if you know their name, use their name. It might sound trite and trivial, but I make no apologies for it, because I think any child using that technique will stand out, and adults will react to them very positively. And I think how a child interacts with adults growing up is an important part of their development. Life is getting longer for us all in the West, at least, but it will always be too short. We can all agree that childhood is the most important part of all of our lives. It is the plinth on which we all stand forever. And even though childhood is fleeting, it is still long enough for parents to be able to make enormously positive interventions and help to develop the soft skills, the emotional skills, the emotional intelligence, which I think is crucial for any child to become a rounded adult and to become a success. But what do I mean by success? Well, what I don't mean is how much money the child is going to earn. Economics is a barometer, but it's not a very satisfactory barometer. Far more important is happiness as a, a gauge to a successful life. And I believe that happiness is not taught in the classroom. Happiness is founded in the home, irrespective of how big or grand the home is. Parents are the first and foremost educators. I think we put far too much expectations on our teachers. We expect too much from them. We put too much responsibility onto them. And too easily we blame teachers for the ills and failings of our children. Not that teachers don't have an important role to play. Of course they do. But it's dwarfed by the role of the parents. Because parents, our job is to nurture our children and provide them with a strong plinth, to nurture the, the emotional skills that are essential for a child to be a success. These are skills that I believe are independent of IQ. These are skills that all children can acquire if their parents are prepared to take their responsibilities seriously and to enjoy the opportunities of the, of, the, of the privilege that it is to be a parent. Thank you very much.